Hi there and welcome to the continuation of 3-in-1 adventures. As you saw in the last episode, we combined the trilogy of Dungeons & Dragons, the board games, um, Ravenloft, Drizzt and Nashardalon into one. And we're um, in search of a dire chamber to um, explore and find out what evil lurks down below. So, <clears throat> it's the beginning of a new round actually and we are ready to to move out and to continue our um, expedition or our adventure let me just readjust the lighting i'm experimenting with lighting so hopefully hopefully this is um this is enjoyable for you to watch we'll see about that later on i'm i'm, I'm still in the process of organizing my recording studio my gaming room and adjust lighting for different types of games I <clears throat> I enjoy playing. All right, so without any further ado, let's let's move out. Let's let's think of um, things we can we can potentially we can potentially do. Right, hmm, this portion of the dungeon is heavily trapped. I'm not sure if I really want to go there, um, unless I do it with my rogue who has thief tools. Uh, that will help him. That will help him um, disarm these traps. However, this is not on the list of my priorities. Uh, I'm interested to see what's what's in this coffin here. Maybe another treasure. We already found one there, and we also want to expand in that direction and see what's 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 there. Mm -hmm. Right, we have an Orc Smasher there. He is in Tarak's play area. So it would be um, it would be on our priority list to get rid of him, really. What can we do? We have some wounds on us. Everybody's wounded. Um, Quinn and Caleb have three wounds on them. So maybe I can <coughs> begin my my round with yeah i'll begin my round with quinn a cleric okay and he will and he will use his uh healing him you and one other hero on your tile regains two hit points so he heals himself he heals caleb right for two so this is the utility power which we will uh, which we will flip um, as soon as we finished our, as soon as we finish our activation <coughs> mm -hmm. and then I suppose we will just go ahead and explore because there's nothing else well I could sacred flame yeah I will sacred flame the orc I forgot about him for just a moment. Attack one monster within one tile of you, so a perfect target. So plus six. I also have the Vorpal Sword, but it applies its um, bonus only to adjacent monsters. So this does not, this does not uh, apply, of course. Twelve. Look, twelve plus six is eighteen. Orc Smasher's AC is fifteen, so he's hit. Where is my? There you go. So just to indicate that. Um, if you hit, choose yourself or another hero on your tile. And this time I'm going to choose Haskin the warrior and heal him. He's down to, uh, uh, well, he has one wound on him. So there, there, are, there aren't any conditions that I can get rid of. So there we go. Quinn, not bad after all. <coughs> so Vorpal Sword goes back to his inventory and we will explore in this direction. And it is, oh, a cavern tile. Interesting. Eh, and then a named one, volcanic vent. Right, we have so many different things to take care of. We have the, let's begin with the monster token. Okay. Let's have a look. One monster, one monster. Okay. One encounter and one named tile as well. All right. Let's see what the named tile. Oh, sorry for the bump. I thought I hit the, the camera, the stand for the camera. 
if I did, sorry for the bump. I hope I didn't cause any dizziness, which is a, an uncomfortable feeling. All right, volcanic vent. Volcanic vent. There it is. A volcanic vent, roomy vent deck. Okay, let's shuffle these and see what's inside, really. Oh, but before I do that, let me find out if if it's uh, if the event occurs. No, it doesn't say anything about volcanic vents. So I suppose we will just draw a card, the random one, the one from from the middle, maybe this one. Ooh, volcanic vents. It says. The heat in this area is almost unbearable. Heroes and monsters on this tile have t minus two AC. Remain in play. All right. So I'll just leave it there like this. So whoever enters that has minus two AC. That's interesting. That's interesting. All right. Let, let's let me put this deck away <coughs> and let's roll for traps. Ooh, four traps. Ooh, that's bad. That's bad. Okay. So we have one, two, one, two, actually I'll put it there, three, and a fourth one without looking, down, 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 yep, and fourth one, say here, yeah, something like that, we'll see how that goes, okay, so, <coughs> a monster. A monster is a skeleton, a skeleton, a skeleton. Okay, we have a perfect skeleton to come into play. Uh, we will use one of these painted ones. All right. We will be slowly incorporating proxies from other games that we already have painted. My sets for D&D are not painted yet. They will be, but not just yet. Okay, so this is the skeleton that arrives to the scene. And the traps, everything is set. So the encounter is overwhelming terror. A cacophony of shrieks and howls rises up around you and you flee in terror. If a start tile is not in play, discard this card and draw a new encounter card. Well, it is. We are on a start tile. We haven't even moved. <laughs> the dungeon is expanding already. Uh, place each hero two tiles closer to the start tile. If a hero is on the same tile as a monster after being placed, that hero is slowed. So the only hero I can put closer to the starting tile is Tarak. Okay. And none of the heroes is on the tile with the monster, so no one is going to be slowed. That's an interesting event. Encounter. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nothing really bad happened. <laughs> That's good. Um... Yeah, so the skeleton now, he's an undead, right? Ooh, undead. If the skeleton is adjacent, he is not. Is within one tile, he, he is. It moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks the hero with a charging slice. He has two attack options, so he attacks me with plus nine. Ooh, so he moves out, he goes through the trap. Monsters do not trigger traps. So, plus nine, let's have a look. Ooh. 10, 19, yep, yeah. and I get two damage. Ooh, ooh, two damage. That's that's really strong. Okay, and he goes to uh, Quinn's play area. There you go, there you go. Okay, now hmm, we have two monsters. Um, skeleton's AC was 16, 16, and one HP. Yeah, so there we go. Hmm. So what do we do now? Tarak, maybe. Tarak, no, because then we will activate the Orc Smasher unless there is a way we can kill him. Can we can we kill him? Huh. Can we kill him? Either the Orc Smasher or the skeleton. Right. How about How about How about how about we activate with, uh, sorry, I, I'm just the, you know, uh, thinking of my options. How about we activate with Heskin, who can hypnotize the orc, 
move him in and attack the skeleton and then other guys will be able to finish him off. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So Heskin activates and he uses Hypnotism on the Orc Smasher, moves him one tile, okay, and attacks the skeleton for 9+. plus. Okay, uh, do we have any uh, buffs on us? No, no, nothing that can help us. It's a two. <laughs> All right, so it's 11, nowhere near uh, doing any damage. So, bam, 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 failed. Com complete failure, mate. Complete failure. Mm -hmm. So I attacked. I will not move myself. I will move my eye here and we will explore in which direction. Uh, I don't know. Let's explore there. It's highly unlikely that I will get, uh, ever get closer to this uh, location uh, with my heroes because I'm thinking of going uh, in that direction potentially I have options here 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 so three three ways to move four actually so yeah okay dungeon tile it is oh a white triangle for a difference for the change I was going to say the door let's have a look uh, a token for the doors Right, right there. Very unlikely I will ever open these doors. They're too far away uh, for me to go there. Okay. Let's have a look if we draw any monsters. Two monsters. Ooh, two monsters. Where are you, monsters? Over there. One, two. Okay, like that. No encounter card, but how about traps? Three of them. Three traps. Wow, whoever designed this uh, put a lot of traps in this place. So the entrance will be trap. Oh, sorry, I looked at this one accidentally. I don't want to spoil my. Yeah, so the entrance is trapped, and one of the exits is also trapped. Okay. I need to find a better way to uh, organize my trap tokens. If you have any ideas how to make them, you know, randomized and not visible for me when I pick them up, then please let me know in the comment section below. Um, so we have the traps. Now, no encounter, nothing. Let's see what the mobs are. Ooh, a ghoul. All right, another perfect proxy that we're going to use for the ghoul. Look at that. This is a fantastic representation from Warhammer Quest. A ghoul already painted, eating a hand. Let me show you the original. <laughs> I wonder who, you know, copied from whom. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons or Games Workshop? All right. You will be painted, matey. You will, but in time. All right, so he goes there. Can you see it on camera? Just let me slide it down just a little bit so that you can see it. What about the other? The other, it's a rat swarm. Look at that. And again, I've already prepared a lot of uh, proxies here on the shelf. You can't see the shelf. Maybe if you're interested, I can show you the shelves of minis. There's about, I don't know, three to 400 minis around me on the shelves. Some of them are painted, mostly Descent, Folklore, Warhammer Quest. Um, some aren't painted, they are uh, waiting for uh, for the painter to, 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 to get to them. But what I did, I went off camera, off camera I went through the monster deck and I checked uh, what proxies I have available, the ones which are painted. I haven't stuck the deck, I um, completely shuffled the deck. However, look at that, Rat Swarm, okay, another fantastic mini from Warhammer Quest. And they are vicious, all right? So they spawn somewhere here. Yeah, slightly bigger than the ghoul, all right? Okay, so uh, that was Hesken, our wizard, who activated these two. So the first one was ghoul. If he's adjacent, he's not within one tile. No, otherwise move just one tile. So he moves in closer. Probably the same thing for the rats. Mm, yep, they just... Rush in 
to meet our heroes to see if they can catch up with with us okay so that was Haskin. All right okay enemies are closing in um, and we're in search of a dire chamber so we're not really interested in in fighting them unless we want to collect some loot all right <coughs> my plan to defeat one of the monsters on our tile failed with Haskin. now we have um, Caleb or the rogue Tarak who can who can finish them off so I suppose we can start with Caleb here what can she do what option does options does she have she has the flask of oil nah, I don't want to use that on either uh, um, Orc Smasher or, or the Skeleton. Uh, they have 15 and 16 AC and the Flask Coil gives me plus 4. Very risky. I also have the Potion of Healing which I don't need to use right now. <coughs> so I suppose I will attack the Orc Smasher who hits harder. Well, Skeleton does, but he's, he's a stronger opponent. So... Uh, yeah, I suppose I will use my Divine Challenge Divine Challenge uh, skill that allows me to choose a monster within one tile, place him adjacent to Kalef and attack it with 8+. Plus. Right, she doesn't have any weapons, nothing to, uh, to, boost her, to boost her damage with, and it's a 10. Okay, we rolled a 10. 10 plus 8, 18, more than 16. So the skeleton dies and goes to my XP pool. He goes back to the um, to the shelf. We will be seeing him more often later on, I suppose. So we need a treasure. All right, let's have a look. What, what is it that you dropped, mate? You dropped a lucky charm. Use this item after any die roll. Reroll the die. Discard this card after using it. Oh, that's actually very good because, you know, when, when I uh, get, for example, when I get hit uh, by a very powerful opponent, then I can, you know, try and mitigate that. We'll see. Good, good, good. That was Kalev. Kalev's attack. I mean, now she can, she can move. She should move, really. But where should she move? This is a volcanic vent, which is trapped. Okay, so maybe I'll move there, here, somewhere. I don't want to move here, because that will make their uh, route potentially shorter if, if there is an open space there, like a passage through these, so they will just catch up with me. Or will they? One, two, one, two. Same, same difference, really. Mm. Yeah, okay. I move there, and we get to explore. And we explore a vault. All right, we've seen that one before in, in, in the previous episode. Okay, so we need the doors. No, I don't know. Which one? Just let's try and take a random one. This one, I suppose. Um, another doors. Okay. Let's see if the vault is trapped. It is heavily trapped. It is rather heavily trapped. We need four traps. Okay. So what I'm going to do is one, two... One, two, three. I'm trying not to look, but it's not that easy. Right, I did not look at these four. So this and this is trapped. Also, <coughs> the way I'm going to play it is this. The entrance is trapped. The doors are trapped, regardless of what it says underneath on the door token. And if I happen to draw a room event deck that allows me to loot it and collect uh, I don't know, from the chest or, you know, anything lying on the ground, on the table, anything, it will be trapped as well. So, let me pull a Vault Room Event deck. Dum, dum, dum. There it is. And I remember, if I remember correctly, 
for the vault. Yeah, I get to draw a vault uh, room event card from the deck as soon as I step on any of the tiles. Okay, I don't know. I'll put it here. Was it a no? It's a white triangle. So ah, we forgot to look if there's if there are any monsters. Yeah, there's one monster. Let's have a look what it is. Uh, have I played it correctly? Yeah, white triangle, so no encounter. Room event deck, monster, traps. And it is... Oh my god! <laughs> it's a feral troll, look at that. He's got 4 HP. It's Well, it's not. it doesn't have good defenses, but look at that. Oh my god! And on hit, it pushes two tiles. Wow. All right. Um, actually, this is another one. We have quite a lot of uh, painted proxies. So this is the original Feral Troll from Legend of Drizzet. He will look nice when he's painted yeah, with his pointy nose and, and the rest of it. But what I've also got is um, from Fantasy Series. I think from the first edition stretch goals, this troll came uh, with with that huge, humongous box, and we had this one painted. It's not finished, but we'll have him finished. But he will, he will. How is he going to fit in there, <laughs> mate? What's up with you? So he's there. Me smash head. <laughs> Wow, 4 HP. Okay, and he hits for 3. Woo, it looks like it can be a defeat, guys. A defeat. It doesn't look it doesn't look very very promising. We need to focus our fire on him. All right then. Yeah, that's so that's that. There's no encounter enough uh, enough of my rumbling. Whew. All right. So tactics for the troll. If the feral troll is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks the hero with a nasty claw. After the attack, pass this card to the player on your right. Oh, so he just, you know, jumps and jumps. And he, if, he, if we don't kill him fast, he will destroy us. So he moves adjacent like that, gets out of the vault, and he will attack me for 8+. plus. Oh my god, let me put these away. All right. Woo! <laughs> right, let's have a look. Can you work? Okay. Let's have a look. It is. Ah, uh, can you see it on camera? I think you can. 11. 11 plus 8 is 19. Kayla's AC is 17. That was close, but she gets hit for free. Free damage. She has 4 now. And he will push her 2 tiles. All right, how about we get pushed in there, but she will go through traps, so I don't want to go through traps. Two tiles, one and two, say here, okay. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> and then I pass it to the character on the right. So the character on the right to uh, um, Caleb is Heskin. So Heskin will receive Troll's um, AI card in his play area. Whew, thankfully, he already activated. Ah, it looks like everybody's activated. <laughs> it looks like everybody's activated. Um, ah, no, no, of course not. Rogue hasn't activated. Oh, yeah, he's hiding here. Um, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to shoot this guy? Let's have a look. What options do we have? Or oh, we kill the Orc Smasher, because Orc Smasher is in Tarak's play area. So if I don't kill him, he will activate and hit us for, well, one. But still, how about we use positioning shot on the big guy? And then if I hit, I will use Furious Assault. Or... Even better, I can use Tornado Strike. Attack four times. Each attack can be against any monster on your tile. I can move there. There's no, no problem with that. And then attack him four times. 
So, I, I, well, if I hit four times, then Darak, you are a hero. Um, is it uh, is it possible? Well, it, well, it is because uh, where is his card? A Trolls AC is only twelve, so nothing nothing that's scary, you know. Shall we do it? I think we shall. Yeah, let's do it. So, in order for me to use the Tornado Strike, do I need to be adjacent? No. Uh, place your hero or any square on your tile after the attack. Tornado Strike. Mm -hmm. So, I suppose I'll go there has to be on my tile because what I was thinking about well no he has four AC so I will roll four times right strike number one miss strike number two hit strike number three miss strike number four hit so he was hit twice right so two HP remaining I'll just put it there well this skill gets flipped because this was a utility? No, it was a daily power. It doesn't really matter because it gets flipped anyway. Um, yeah. And then what? And then we just explore. I suppose. Ooh, look at that. What we found. We found a chapel. A chapel. This is a um, Castle Ravenloft. Castle Ravenloft uh, tile. But look at that. How, how thematic. I absolutely adore these games, you know, even when you completely mix them. I on, uh, Honestly, guys, I, I promise you, I haven't stacked any of these decks. I just completely randomized three stacks of tiles. And look at that. Look at how thematically they fit in. We have a Crypt of Barov and Ravenova, parents of um, Strad himself. And next to it, we have a chapel. Oh, white triangle, so we shouldn't put it like that. We should put it like this. Actually, yeah. Oh, okay. I will replace that. I flipped it accidentally. Where are my, where are my coffin, coffin tiles? Look at that. Yeah, and we'll put that this one there. Maybe, maybe there's a treasure. Maybe there's a trap. We don't know. We don't know. Okay. So a white triangle. So, no worries, okay. First things first, let's have a look if we have any monsters. We have three monsters. <laughs> oh my God, are you serious right now? Okay, monster number one, monster number two, <laughs> monster number three. And I used my tornado strike, okay. We will reveal them in just a moment. <laughs> I think it's one of the worst tokens that you can potentially uh, pull out. Yeah. So, traps. Two. Two traps. Okay. Um, and we have a, an altar of some sort. Okay. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Two traps. Okay. Where do we want to put them? I don't know. The entrance, I suppose. <clears throat> three monsters yeah there's a white triangle so no encounter card ah but it's a named tile so <clears throat> just quickly let me double check room event stack uh sharp well it doesn't say anything so we will just reveal it uh just like that. So let me shuffle the room event stack and see what it is. Maybe something beneficial, maybe not. I don't know. This one, chapel. All right. Let's see what it is. Event. The altar is covered in white linen. A golden chalice is displayed by candlelight. A figure kneels before the altar in quiet contemplation. I was wondering where I would get the sacrificial blood for tonight's ceremony. You'll do nicely. Discard any monsters on the chapel tile, then add a young vampire to the tile. If able, the young vampire starts with two fewer HP. Oh! <laughs> what? What? I think it's one of the uh, one of the mini bosses 
uh, that can spawn in Castle Ravenloft. <laughs> but look at that, look at what happened. Discard any monsters on the chapel tiles. I had three monsters and I get to discard them. <laughs> and we get to pull a, a young vampire. I need to look up his, uh, his tile, his AI tile. Uh, maybe I've got it here handy somewhere to show it off before we close this uh, episode. Mm, no, <laughs> done. So I need to go, you know, rummage through the uh, Castle Ravenloft uh, box and and dig it out. I'll do that for for the uh, for the next episode. So I think it's uh, well, it's perfect timing, really. Because Tarak, our rogue, was the last one to activate in this round, so he did. And look at the look at the dungeon. Look at how it how it um, plays out. The place is extremely heavily trapped. All right, we pulled three monsters <laughs> when we discovered the chapel, but then the young vampire showed up and he just told them to go away. He he just they they just you know ran away in fear of him. And we have to face the young vampire right now in the chapel who's looking for blood to complete his ceremony. So he's kneeling at the altar here. We will spawn him there. I'm just looking for a vampire just before we go. I have a perfect proxy here on the side. Just bear with me, guys. I have a fantastic figure for the vampire. I'm, I'm sure you will love it. Look at that. <clears throat> Look at this guy. Okay. A vampire. All right, a young vampire. There he is. We'll look up his AI card. Maybe I'll put him... There you go. We'll look up his AI card and uh, we will see what he's all about in the next episode. Uh, until then, thank you very much for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly have. And I'll see you in the next episode very, very soon. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.